Every single day, there are about 100,000 flights crisscrossing the world. Almost every single region on Earth is connected. But there is an exception. Flights across the South Atlantic, between Africa and South America, are extremely limited. With the rest of the world being spoiled for choice with their flight options, why exactly are these two continents so isolated from one another? Our first stop on this transatlantic trip is, of course, the geography of South America and Africa. At first glance, there doesn't seem to be any reason as to why Africa and South America wouldn't have more flights between them. Africa is the second most populated continent in the world, with an estimated 1.5 billion people. South America, meanwhile, has a population of about 450 million people. So with nearly a combined 2 billion people, approximately 25% of the entire planet's population, it would make sense for there to be a lot of demand for air travel between the two continents. But there's more here than meets the eye. Separated by the South Atlantic Ocean, Africa and South America are actually pretty close to one another when looking at their nearest physical points. The straight line distance between the Brazilian city of Natal, home to 1.5 million people, is only about 2,900 kilometers away from Sierra Leone's capital of Freetown, again with about 1.5 million people. This might sound like a long distance, but there are many more transcontinental flights that cover far more distance than this. New York City in the United States to London in the United Kingdom is one of the busiest air routes in the world, with over 4 million annual passengers. And yet, its straight line distance is nearly twice as far, at over 5,500 kilometers. So the actual geographic distance between South America and Africa is not to blame here. One argument that could be made to support the limited number of flights between these continents is the potential lack of emergency landing spots. For standard passenger jets, enough fuel is required to make it to an emergency landing location should the airplane lose an engine mid-flight. Because of this, commercial jets with two engines must remain within 60 minutes flying time of an airport just in case. This is where things get tricky, but not impossible, for the South Atlantic. You see, the South Atlantic Ocean is incredibly sparse in terms of habitable landmasses with infrastructure for a passenger jet. In fact, it only has three possible runways to offer in such an event. The first of these is on the island of St. Helena, which is situated almost 2,000 kilometers off the coast of the African countries of Angola and Namibia. At an average speed of about 900 kilometers per hour, this means that the flying distance between mainland Africa and St. Helena is a bit more than two hours, leaving a small window where the jet would be beyond these 60 minutes. Not great, but not impossible either. After that is Ascension Island. Lying 1,300 kilometers northwest of St. Helena, this small island is home to a military facility which is jointly run by the British and American Air Forces. Despite its designated military status, the runway on Ascension Island could, and has, been used for emergency landings by passenger jets, with the most recent example being a Delta Airlines flight in 2013. And finally, we have the island of Fernando de Noronha. This popular tourist destination is just off the coast of Brazil, at a mere distance of 350 kilometers. So, is the lack of flights between Africa and South America simply because of these logistical issues? Not really, because even with relatively few emergency landing spots, larger jets can have four engines, not just two, negating this specific need entirely. So while emergency landing locations can certainly be a factor, even historically, there have been trans-South Atlantic flights. Once again, I'm foregoing a traditional sponsor of this episode to let you know about my Substack. And because you're enjoying this video, you should go subscribe. Every week, I write a free article that pairs with the weekly video. So just click the link in the description below or scan the QR code, and I'll see you there. The first transcontinental flight over the South Atlantic Ocean took place in 1922, where a Portuguese crew flew from Lisbon all the way to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, completing the flight across multiple stages. Then, five years later, in 1927, the first non-stop flight across the South Atlantic took place. This time, it was a French crew who flew from Senegal to Brazil. In fact, during this time, air travel in the South Atlantic was actually considered easier than in the North, due to the North Atlantic's harsher weather, being that the major cities in North America, such as New York City and Toronto, and basically all of Europe are pretty far north, it hits more turbulent weather systems, as the jet stream is constantly flowing. This made early air travel between the two continents 
quite challenging. As a result, throughout the 1930s, there were consistent flights between Africa and South America, which were mostly carried out by French, Italian, and German companies. At one stage, there were even airships traveling across the South Atlantic. Between 1931 and 1937, the hydrogen-powered Graf Zeppelin routinely traveled from Frankfurt, Germany to Rio de Janeiro. Since then, however, air travel in the South has slowed considerably, mostly because during this early period of commercial flight, most of Africa was still heavily colonized by Europe. And while South America was mostly free by the early 1900s, Suriname didn't gain independence until 1975, it meant that most flights going to and leaving from Africa were heading to Europe, where colonial administrators and extracted resources and wealth were heading. The demand to connect the colonial holdings in Africa to the recently freed countries of South America was basically non-existent. Of course, in recent decades, this has changed. Africa is independent just like South America. And with that freedom, each continent has grown independent economies that should naturally want to reach out and connect to the wider world. Basically, the lack of historic flights in the 1900s hasn't persisted because of historic geographic and technologic issues. Instead, it's caused almost entirely by population and economy. Remember how I said that Africa and South America have nearly 2 billion people between them, roughly 25% of the global population? Well, in terms of air travel, the total population really isn't all that relevant. What matters is population density and an economy that supports what is otherwise a very expensive way to travel. Africa has a total area size of over 30 million square kilometers. For reference, the continent is so vast that it could fit all 50 US states inside it three times over, with large chunks of Africa being uninhabitable, such as the regions of the Sahara Desert and the vast Congo rainforest, the continent is home to several huge clusters of population. One such cluster is South Africa. As Africa's sixth most populous country with a total population of 64 million people, the country is home to the two large cities of Johannesburg and Cape Town, and accompanying its high population is a strategic location in relation to South America, as it is almost directly across the Atlantic Ocean from Brazil. Because of this, there are currently a number of flights that connect directly from South America to Brazil. These flights are from Cape Town to Sao Paulo and Johannesburg to Sao Paulo, respectively. The second largest population in Africa is Ethiopia, which is home to about 130 million people and another rare African South American flight. Originating from the capital city of Addis Ababa, this flight connects not just Ethiopia and Brazil by way of Sao Paulo, but also to Argentina, with the plane's final destination being Buenos Aires. Other transcontinental flights connect Brazil with the African countries of Angola and Cabo Verde. This is because all three of these countries are former Portuguese colonies, and therefore hold some social, cultural, and of course, linguistic ties with one another. Language is often a strong motivating factor in international travel after all. By now, you've probably noticed that almost all flights on the South American side are heading to or from Brazil, the lone Buenos Aires flight aside. This is because the country constitutes almost half the entire population of South America, with Brazil being home to over 210 million people. So there are flights over the South Atlantic between South America and Africa, but there's not many. And if population and geography aren't the problems, then there's really only one answer to this. It's because of the economy. The saying that money makes the world go round is quite literal as far as international travel is concerned. Given that international tourism is a pretty extreme luxury and businesses don't need to travel nearly as much these days, it makes sense that if there's not an economic demand to connect to places, there won't be any service. The fact of the matter is that there simply isn't enough money in the African and South American economies to justify a need for a high level of air travel. Let's compare their situation to Europe and North America. Today, a staggering 2,000 flights travel across the North Atlantic every single day. This endless amount of flights connect just about every city you can think of. One city in either Europe or North America often connects directly to a half dozen or more cities on the opposite side of the ocean. The amount of travel and connectedness between North America and Europe is astounding, especially considering the early safety issues with trans North Atlantic flights. All told, these two continents hold a combined population of just over 1.3 billion people, which is far fewer than that of Africa and South America's 2 billion people. But let's look at the GDP across these regions. 
both North America and Europe's GDPs are almost $30 trillion a year. They are undoubtedly the two centers for the global economy. South America and Africa, on the other hand, have a GDP of $4.3 trillion and less than $3 trillion respectively. So despite holding a much larger population, South America and Africa only have about one-tenth of the money in its economy when compared to Europe or North America. More than that though, the economies of Europe and North America are built on a more specialized workforce, with the continents boasting leading jobs in areas such as business, engineering, pharmaceuticals, and entertainment. And with the two continents being much more connected by business and diplomacy, it makes each's economy much more accessible to one another. And so here we have the final piece to the South Atlantic puzzle, immigration patterns. People around the world are always aspiring to achieve a better quality of life. And for many places in the world, this requires immigrating to countries that have more wealth. So if someone in Africa wants to further their career as an engineer, just as an example, then typically they will move to Europe. This is generally the same case for people in South America who will often relocate to North America. But moving from Africa to South America and vice versa wouldn't net the same benefits. And because of this, there isn't much immigration demand between Africa and South America, but there is a lot of demand for northbound flights to Europe and North America respectively. So will there ever be additional flights between Africa and South America? Probably. There's a direct correlation between the economy and flight frequencies of a region, which means if these regions were to develop further economically, which they are currently, then it's probable that more flights connecting the two continents would start up. And when we examine the world economy, it becomes clear that Africa in particular is developing rapidly, with the continent having 11 of the world's 20 fastest growing economies. Based on this, I would argue that it's a matter of when, not if, that we see an increase in the amount of flights over the South Atlantic. After all, where money goes, people follow. We now have the ability to travel almost anywhere on the planet by air. So it makes sense that whenever you see a gap in air travel anywhere on the planet, it's because of economics. And that's certainly the case for the South Atlantic. Hey, speaking of which, are you interested in following me around the globe? Then head over to my travel channel. This week, I'm literally walking across the country of Singapore. Why? Because I can. Where else can you walk across an entire country? I hope you enjoyed learning all about why planes don't cross over the South Atlantic Ocean. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos. If you wanna watch another video, be sure to check out this video explaining why Guyana, Suriname, and French Guiana aren't actually South American.